Hi guys, my name is Louise Hill and today I'm going to present you a video on principles and management of pleural chest tubes in the home. I'm a clinical nurse consultant. I've been a nurse for 25 years registered. Um, I finished my training in 1993 at James Cook University and I'm a current student in Master of Nursing and Management and Leadership. I should be finished hopefully next year. I've also finished a long time ago a graduate certificate in critical care ICU. This is where I did learn quite a few principles on chest drain management. Moving on, who should use this video? Well, the audience in this video is intended for registered nurses in the community setting. However, we will, uh, this video will have a benefit to all health professionals. It's uh, basically directed at uh, nurses who work in the community setting and whether your clients come in to see you in the wound clinics or if they come in to see you, or you go in to see them at home, sorry. So basically, let's look at the basics. Uh, what is a pleural chest tube? You probably know a lot of this, guys, but it doesn't hurt to revisit the basics of chest drain placement and management. So the chest drain is basically a pleural drain that sits in the pleural space. It doesn't stick inside the lung, as some people think. It sits in between the visceral and parietal parts of the um, lining of the uh, pleural cavity. Normally it exits the skin and is sutured in so and this allows for the escape of air, excess fluid and air in the pleural space. You can see from the picture that you have there that there's blood which is sitting in the pleural space. There's also air that can help to collapse the lung itself what happens is we normally have 20, 10 to 20 mils of pleural fluid between the, um, the pleura and as the, ru the rubbing happens, the rubbing action of the pleura, you should only, you have no normal forces up against the lung which expands normally and contracts normally. When you have movements or shifts in fluid volume or air volume, this creates pressure on the lung and the lung therefore deflates, making it harder to breathe harder to breathe for the patient. So you then need to insert a pleural chest drain to remove that excess fluid and air. So what will it look like? Basically, you have a drain which is coming out from someone's chest, either side, left or right, or you can have bilateral. The picture that you see on the left here is of a portex drain, which is made by the atrium group. Um, you can also see the actual chest drain, which is used, and a really big suture, which is used to uh, keep the chest drain in place and in, in the pleural space. Uh, you would normally not have to use your, uh, you can see a scalpel there, we wouldn't have to use that at all. So this drainage bag is one of the portable drainage bags that you'll see in community. Today for the purposes of our discussion, you'll only be taught about two different drains, uh, which we will get to in the next few slides. So fluid and air accumulates. You've got blood sitting there in the pleural space. You can see that's not a not a very happy lung there. The person would be gasping for air and be under some significant physical strain. Not a good situation. So we have chest tube placement. This is just a repeat of the picture that you saw. So the chest tube can uh, be placed in any area around the lung, but essentially that's where it's fluted and it can collect fluid along any length of that drainage tube. So who would get a chest drain? Well, this is just a limited example, but patients who have had surgical intervention, patients who have experienced trauma, patients who have experienced just spontaneous pneumothorax, just meaning that the lung collapses without any 
major reason this can happen in young males especially who are playing sports for example healthy individuals or we get uh, in community we sometimes get cancer patients and palliative patients who require these chest strains either in for a period of time or indefinitely um, helping them to maintain a quality of life in the community So why are patients coming out of hospital with chest strains? Well, patients are being discharged sooner from hospital for many reasons. One is cost saving, hospital avoidance. It's also avoiding uh, patients who are at risk of contracting nosocomial infections in the hospital. Um, patients are ambulatory, they're self-caring. They usually want to be at home. You have cancer and palliative patients who want to buy more time at home. Patients who usually, they usually recover a lot more quickly in their own environment as evidenced by research, particularly that research that's been done around hospital in the home type care. We offer post-acute care where I work and the evidence does point towards patient, increased patient satisfaction and they do recover more quickly when they are at home in their own environment, their own bed they're eating their own food, they have their own family around them and it's just a better environment for them. So the first type of drain you'll see in um, our community organisation is uh, our service is a collection reservoir which is also known as a pneumostat which is made by Atrium Medical. It's an air valve drain so you'll see in the chamber you can collect up to 30 mils of fluid, so you would not be expecting a patient to come out of community with this into the community with this drain in if they're having more than 50 to 100 mils per day coming out of their chest drain, their chest tube. So we would then move on to another type of chest drain that we would monitor, which was the picture that I showed you previously. There are many ways we need to manage this pneumostat drain as we will see in the next few slides. One of the features you'll notice of the pneumostat is the one-way air valve. You can see that there's a 20 mil chamber. You can see above that chamber is a small half moon where you can put in a mil of sterile water. This chamber is like a reservoir where it's a one-way valve air can bubble out of that reservoir and if you have water in there as the patient in inhales and exhales you should be able to see it bubble and this is a normal sign and what you should be doing also is emptying that reservoir uh, underneath at the bottom of the chamber you can see you've got a little blue bung which we will get to so we'll just keep moving Here you'll see a picture of the reservoir with some hemispheric fluid. There's a lure port at the bottom of the chamber and you can wipe that port with an alco wipe and withdraw the fluid as required. You don't need to get the patient to stop breathing or hold their breath whilst this is happening as the air leak well will regulate the escape of, of air and um, it won't be an issue for the client. Also you'll notice the way the patient is lying in bed. If you tape the chest drain, as the tube as close to the wall of the patient as possible, you allow that pneumostat to swing and hang off the bed, allowing it gravity to work. You don't want that pneumostat being upside down. If the air leak well does get too saturated, the valve will cease to work properly and you could cause a tension pneumothorax. There is a YouTube link that I've included here for you for the care of an air valve and drain. So as stated before, it's not suitable for community use if you have greater than 20 mils of fluid daily coming into the, the drain. The chamber must not be taped to allow swinging when the patient is laying down. And this valve can be changed from daily to weekly. Moving on, I've got a picture here of a Portex ambulatory bag. 
This is the only other type of drain you should see in our service. It's a bag where basically the patient is free to walk around and has a strap that can go over their shoulder. It can collect up to 1500 mils of fluid daily. The bag should not be raised above the patient's head. If they're say having a quick shower or they're sitting, it shouldn't be hanging up on a you know, high end of a door or anything like that. It should always be below chest level, uh, wherever the patient is standing or sitting. So the bag should never be inverted. There is a cage, little caged valve at the top of the um, bag that you can see to the right and that is where air escapes and helps to regulate and balance the pressures inside the bag and inside the chest of the patient. So where else? I've put a little link there for you at the bottom of the page of um, this, this um, YouTube video. You can see that YouTube video will show you the ambulatory uh, Portex bag but it's also the atrium uh, it's a video of an atrium cortex portable drain which is very similar to this one but the concepts are very similar. Very quickly, um, changing the bag between doctor visits. This is pertinent for our community nurses. You will be taken through a competency so this video is not the be all and end all for you as nurses. There's extra readings and uh, will certainly help you and support you any, in any way possible. For those of you who don't work with me or are in community elsewhere, I strongly encourage you to do extra reading and look at as many resources that you have and be particularly um, familiar with your own uh, products that you use in your service. So you always ensure your hands are clean, New packaging is open and ready to connect to the new drain. The patient should be sitting. You should practice with the patient and ask the patient to inhale, hold their breath and release. What you're going to do is ask the patient to hold their breath whilst you're changing the drainage bag over and then you ask them in the next breath to hold their breath and you do a quick changeover using a clean non-touch technique. So I don't practice cl clamping the chest tube and this is endorsed by the lead cardiac surgeon in the organisation that I work for. Mainly the reasoning is because it was minuted in a meeting that I attended where the surgeons felt that there was too much risk in leaving a pleural chest tube clamped in the community and this was agreed to at an organisational meeting. Quick points to remember, community clients who have a pleural drain must be seen daily by a registered nurse. We must always take observations daily, so that's temperature, pulse, respirations and blood pressure. We're observing the site of the drain and attending to the dressing, if not daily, second daily at least, and recording it on a wound dressing chart. We're recording the output daily into a drain chart so we can see how much is coming out of the chest drain in a 24-hour period and the consistency of what's coming out as well is important to document. Ensure your client understands what to do if the bag becomes detached from the drain site. Ensure your client understands what to do with feeling suddenly unwell. That is call an ambulance because that could be an imminent emergency. The client must be reviewed weekly in clinic at the hospital and you must always encourage questions and communication from your client to minimise risk. So ensure that's things like handing out your brochures and information about the community health service that we work for. And there's also a dedicated brochure that the client should also have once they're discharged from the hospital explaining how to care for their drain. Ultimately, we're aiming to have a happy and healthy patient and this helps us to be reassured as clinicians. Here are some of the references that, and resources that I have used to help put this YouTube video together. I hope you've enjoyed watching my video today and thank you very much for watching. Bye.